All right, welcome. Um, it, this video is going to be a, a little bit different in that I, I have found over the years that while it's not always the easiest thing uh, to do initially, when you can you know put ideas out there that maybe you're not 100% confident in, you can oftentimes get really good feedback, really good insight into better ways of doing things. And so I thought I'd experiment with that in this video. And, and what I mean by that is that uh, if you take a look at the video where we talked, where I discussed, you know, large overlays in PE files, um, I thought, well, it'd be really nice to have a YAR rule to help detect those. And while they're, they're easy enough to see based off of some of the file characteristics and, and analyzing them with tools like Die or, or Detect It Easy, you know, YAR can help to detect those earlier, integrate into different analysis pipelines and any number of things. Now, what I wasn't sure of is the best way to do that. So I'm going to propose here today is just a YAR rule that certainly gets the job done for the use case that I have in mind, but maybe there's a better way and certainly a number of things to consider with the rule as well that I'll throw out there. So what about the PE file? Well, a quick recap. Again, I've got another video. I'll link it here that goes into more of the analysis of it and the, and the structure of the PE file. But we have a, a relatively large file. This file is, you know, 750 megabytes or something. And a large part of that is just the, the bloat added by an overlay. And we can look at that overlay. We don't need to extract the overlay in this at this point. You can see, though, that the content here in this overlay and all the bytes here in this, this hex editor view, there's nothing. Now, I'm not saying that overlays aren't used. They definitely are. They're just, in this case, being utilized to add bloat to the file to maybe disrupt you know, different analysis pipelines. So how could we detect that with a YAR rule? Well, the first thing that came to my mind was to use the entropy. And we'll use the entropy calculations here and detect it easy because this will show us the, you know, the, the flat line that is the entropy in that file. Entropy is a measure of randomness. And if there is no randomness, then it would stand to reason that there is no entropy. So here you can see the overlay is this region of the file and it is calculating a zero on the entropy scale. And that's simply because there's not a single byte or bit of deviation in all of that content. And so that's why there's an entropy calculation of zero, as you can see here. Okay, well, what about a YAR rule? Well, uh, the first thing that came to my mind was to use some of the different modules, PE module for one, and then the math module is another, you know, PE to help identify the overlay, and then the math module to calculate the entropy. So um, the condition that I created here is that uh, there is an overlay set on the file. I chose just for experimentation, you know, a relatively arbitrary value just to say, okay, um, if it has an overlay, which means that the offset value here is not zero, and this overlay is greater than 1,024, and, and then this is where the math module comes into play, calculate the entropy from the beginning of that offset to the size of that overlay. And in this case, I'm saying, is the overlay calculation to be zero? That means that is the, the overlay data non, does it, is it just continuously repeating? Okay. As you might expect, if we run that YAR rule against our, our file that we're analyzing here, you'll see that it does in fact match. Um, so that's saying that this file does you know, have a what, what I'm considering a large overlay. Now, you'll notice it took a little bit of time. It's a large file. Uh, I imagine there's a little bit of expense, computationally speaking, to calculate the entropy, although I don't know for that for sure. So for my analysis where you know I'm grabbing samples, onesies, twosies, maybe a, a, a collection of them, you know, nothing, I'm not doing anything at, at a massive scale, this is fine. You know, if I'm going to analyze something and I and I have a number of YAR rules and I'm running over it, uh, you know, a couple seconds for this rule to execute really doesn't impact me. Uh, but I would imagine there's some performance issues and things you might want to consider depending on where you'd want a rule like this to go. Of course, this rule is 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 very generic. It's just something that might only be helpful if I am looking at more particular samples or a set of samples to help me understand what's going on here. Um, anyways, I'd love to hear from you if you have a better way of uh, of you know determining these large overlays. Um, you know, certainly the entropy calculation could va be varied here as one way to, um, you know, sort of loosen up the YAR rule a bit, as well as the size. 
Uh, but for the handful of samples that I that I saw that were bloating based off of that repeating pattern because that compresses well, uh, this is this has worked really well for me. So, anyways, there it is. Uh, there's the R rule for large um, bloated sections, and let me know what you think.